Right. We wanted to take advantage of the fact that the the little ones are so close up here in their cafeteria, as we've been calling it, or as I guess our director Mark has been calling it. Um, so we wanted to get started and have this scene as people are joining us for our last uh, virtual Mother's Day Live session. It's like we're we've got a couple viewers coming on. Oh, hello. Hi. To figure out who this is, who they are. I can't tell Snotra and Yord apart quite yet. Can either of you? <laughs> no, it's uh, no. Snotra and Yord because here's Jada. And yeah. Rhea, so I think. Yeah. So the two littles that we're looking at right now are definitely Snotra and Yord. We're just not sure which is which quite at this moment. I think right is. But I mean, they're both equally just as cute. So. Oh. So we think maybe Yord is the one that's laying down and Snotra is the one that's kind of a little bit more wiggly wormy. <laughs> so thanks everyone for joining us um, yet again. Uh, happy Mother's Day, everybody. This has been, um, for all intents and purposes, um, pretty successful, we think, for our very first virtual Mother's Day. It's been really fun for us to connect all of you throughout the day um, with our live sessions and the different videos that we've been posting. So thank you for coming along the ride with us. We really appreciate it. So you wanna get started? Sure. Danny, do you wanna explain what we're looking at here? Yeah, I would love <laughs> to. So um, this little spot, you're gonna notice that there's some gates and Galena is in the background kind of looking and smelling away at these calves. So this special area is just for calves. So what they're right next to, that little red piece, is their feeder. So it gives them their special muscle Supplemental feed that's made just for calves. The big difference is that feed is a lot smaller, um, and she's figuring out how which way to get out. Yeah, that's what she's. <laughs> she's like, oh no, I got in here. Now how do I get out? Oh, you have to go around the other way, sweetheart. Yeah, go get mom. Mom's the silver gate. Mom's growling to left, try to help. Left, left. Hey <laughs> guys, that's not helpful. <laughs> You're making for very riveting um, live TV it's here, true. though, Snowtra. <laughs> so this little thing um, is a gate all the way around it. So there's a tree above them for shade. They have their own tiny water um, bowl so that they have a water bowl just for them at their height and their own minerals over there. So everything is at muskox level and it's kept separate from our mamas so that our moms don't eat it all on them. So this is special they, for they them. they would. Exactly. <laughs> So this is kind of like, our herd manager calls it a muskox baby safe space. So it's their area. Um, Mark has been calling it the calf ateria, which I somehow have not heard that pun before. In years. I know, it's bizarre. <laughs> oh, she figured it out. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Snowdry, you did it! We'll see if Yord yeah. can figure now it out. Now Yord is like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yord, you just watched, you just watched her do it. I didn't really watch. I guess. <laughs> Oh, 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 a little limbo! Oh, you God. did it! Good job! <laughs> what do you think, Freya? Oh, and then we've got Freya over here just doing her own thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> She's a feisty little one yeah. already. <laughs> and Yord here loves to talk. So we were outside a little earlier working on some of our new doors and all we could hear was her just talking away which kind of sounds goaty is the best way mm -hmm. to acknowledge it for a calf uh, and they aren't really big talkers you don't hear them make a whole lot of noise but um, she was going for it and she's been pretty talkative i feel like since she was born yeah i could hear her through the window of the office <laughs> <laughs> i was like there's no way but there's sure enough yeah and naturally when we finished what we were working on and we're going to come out and video it for you guys, uh, she stopped. Yeah. So. <laughs> and now she's quiet. Exactly. <laughs> oh. So while you guys are hanging out with us, we'll keep chatting away about these little cuties. But if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask them. Um, we'd love to tell you all the information you could ever want to know about a muskox. <laughs> got a lot of hellos and acknowledging that they're cute <laughs> oh man aren't they <laughs> the mountains don't look too shabby today either no. it's really helping what a scene we'll take it yeah <laughs> what are you doing Freya? 
my gosh, she's digging. Boy, the grass just in the last day or two is just exploding, just green all of a sudden. Yeah. Possibly some rain tomorrow, and if that happens, we'll probably see just an explosion in grass growing. These guys are dying for green grass. They've been on hay since about October, beginning of November. So green grass is just such the treat. They're finding every little every little nub they can. <laughs> uh, Susan would like to know how much do the babies typically weigh when they're born? Yeah, they're weighing in about 20-ish pounds. We, you know, but... years ago we were trying to weigh them at birth. So when, when they're first born, we try to get in there. We've got a vaccination we like to, to give to them. It's more of a prophylactic than anything else just to protect them. Um, moms have been protected, so it's a little bit of an extra. Uh, and part of that process used to be to weigh them and do a little bit more work. Uh, we were not getting really accurate weights on them, and so we stopped doing it. We were more concerned about just having that first uh, interaction with them, that first vaccination, and then getting them right back to mom, because uh, any time a way that's too much can start, if a mom is at all you know, hesitant, we don't want to have an abandoned calf, and so we try to get in and out really, really quick. We've got it down to about 30 seconds, so rather than get an inaccurate weight when they're first born, we tend to just let mom and calf have good bonding time and let them right back together. So between tw probably 22 and 30 pounds would be a real normal average, but because we don't do a whole lot with that number, we're much more happy to get mom and calf back together to bond. Yeah, good question, Susan. That's a great question. Should we go around the corner? Yeah. See if they'll see stick they'll around? Do. Yeah. So here again, you can kind of just see the, the, the cafeteria a little bit better, um, where Danny was talking about they've got their, their own little special water and food bowls in here that the moms can't get to and completely annihilate. <laughs> Although if you look on this side, you can see where they tried to get to it. Yes. Yeah. I don't know if you can design. see the dents in the fence, but. <laughs> so that'll be a, a fun job probably tomorrow for the for Jamie and her magical intern is trying to deal with fixing that up. <laughs> yeah and their water bowl is always fun hopefully we'll get videos of it um, as the calves start to realize the water bowl um, they tend to like to play in it and I've watched them like toss it over and like end up in it and then get stuck in it uh, Heath one of our big bowls when we used to give them hay in little the same type of little black buckets uh, he, one day he got stuck in a black bucket. And he was, was under like, it, wasn't he? <laughs> he got under it, too. Yeah, he got yeah. stuck underneath it. Yeah. <laughs> Which then, weighed oh, about no. a quarter of a pound. <laughs> yeah. But he was capped off. Yeah, and then, like, we'll, our water troughs that you'll see out here, um, we had hay in one of those, and he climbed in it and then got one leg stuck, and it was a whole thing. Oh, he, he got out, but... <laughs> yeah. Lived to tell the tale. Yeah. So it's pretty fun to watch them discover things. Yeah. Hi, Galena. Good mama. Got my very first bee trying to get me. Handy. Mm -hmm. They're Equal back. <laughs> yeah. Oh, checking out the ball. Oh. We were talking um, in our last live about how they're discovering toys, but we're not like super involved with playing with them yet, which appears to be the case. We also <laughs> said something which could have been part of it. <laughs> Yeah, I love sniffing of things, mm -hmm. I feel like. Just really getting a feel. Yeah. So it's kind of cool. So I don't know if you guys can hear the wind, but the wind picked up. The sun isn't directly shining on us anymore. And it's a lot cooler feeling, which has made these guys move around a lot more than they were doing just a couple hours ago. Um, yeah, it's nice to, you know, they, they have the option now to get out, out of their shade shelter because it's not quite so blistering. So what they're all hanging out next to is the water trough. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. You just have to be everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Jade, no, not right now. <laughs> so that's maybe a good. So what was that behavior there? Yeah. Would you so say? 
muskox mamas are super protective and they are herd animals so they will protect each other's calves but they have one calf and that is it and it is there so um, these guys are super dense they can handle getting a, a nudge from another mama but if they get too close to thinking maybe they're gonna nurse or in their bubble space they're gonna push them out of the way so while um, it's okay to have your calf play with another calf mm -hmm. um, you you kind of have your space so while they'll protect each other's calves they're not about to become the mother of another calf there someone else's yep. mama there you go. okay they're sniffing poop yeah they're very curious about it yeah <laughs> so you'll notice on their butts this is probably when they're this age is about the only time you'll ever see their true butt uh, because they're all going to start growing guard hair. So while they do have guard hair, it's just very hard to see right now. And it's going to keep growing their whole life. And it's going to eventually cover up everything. And so you can notice now that they don't have a big tail. They do have a tiny little tail, but that's about it. So these guys were made for winter. So they have little ears, little tails, short little legs, everything to make sure that they can keep their core warm and the rest of it is not going to kind of take away energy. This is um, why we like, can't have like, nice things. Excuse, so we excuse have to us. pay for these. <laughs> and you can see how Jadeite has actually wrecked this. It's broken now. Yeah. And if we're going to be expected to give you your supplement, we're going to have to go buy another one. Thank you very much. Without the benefit of any Mother's Day help and support. So thank you. That was nice. <laughs> we're going to call this day a net loss now. <laughs> They're terrible animals. They don't, yes. really they don't to be listen. Terrible. They don't listen. <laughs> and um, generally ungrateful. That's actually the perfect segue mark into this next question I have from Jim. Have you ever had any of the musk oxen break through the fence and get out? <laughs> we are Which really- Which story you wanna tell? <laughs> yeah. I was gonna tell the appropriate answer is like they really like to be here and they don't wanna leave until, actually this winter was interesting. So we had, this, this last winter ended with um, pretty big snow, pretty big blow, Lots of drifts, pretty big snow, pretty big blow, more drifts, pretty big snow, pretty big blow. And Amethyst, not Amethyst, Acadia, ringleader of the Rotten, she actually <laughs> popped over a fence. I came home one evening uh, after an airport run and there were muskox on the drift about 12 feet up in the air chewing on a spruce tree. <laughs> Um, I'm sorry, it's not funny. It's not funny. She's still in being grounded. She's not allowed to use her iPhone or drive right now. <laughs> but fortunately, they don't go anywhere. It's very, very rare that they've gotten out. Uh, we pretty much identified anywhere that drifting happens on fences. But Acadia and Pixie, uh, quite the opportunists, and then taught a bunch of young girls some how to sneak out through the bedroom window when mom and dad weren't watching. So, um, <laughs> so the answer is yes, so yeah, they so have, but we haven't lost any yet. No. The great thing about these guys is that when they do get out, they are, they want to test boundaries. They want to find the loophole, uh, which is pretty fun to witness for us, <laughs> but they generally go towards where they know things that they want are like the barn where there's food or our tour facility area. Cause there's usually, flowers planted or more people who could oh, give them more food. Little man. So if you look down here just immediately to our north, you'll see our brand new barn that was really, really, really hoping to welcome a couple thousand visitors today and didn't because of this uh, nasty little thing going on. But we were in the middle of construction and little man, oh, little man, little man, little man, <laughs> what to say. Um, He's our oldest male on the farm, and suddenly he was in the middle of the construction site. As, as just so that was a very exciting thing for all the all the workers, all the guys, <laughs> yeah, all the trades guys who were in there working so hard to bring this building to be. But um, fun for them, less interesting for us. Lots of fun for little man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll have to try to post that video. We no. do. We do have it. We've no. got a secret video. Oh, so. No. <laughs> Maybe it can be um, Little Man, the lost videos by donation only. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. That'll solve all of our financial problems. Yeah. Watch Little Man break into the construction zone. Watch Little Man break into the barn. Heck, I might pay to see that again, even though I've got the video. <laughs> well, because you keep using the company card with those. True. <laughs> 
so this will be a good i know some of you have seen this already and other oh that just kills me every time and then she's right behind her she's leading the charge <laughs> yeah I so, Danny, do you want to take that one? What, why yeah. was she? Do, why was Galena just charging at us? Yeah. So Galena's reminding us that she's in charge of that calf, and so it's kind of like her warning. So muskox are all about behavior more than trying to make a sound to warn you. So she was telling us that that we were a little too close to our calf, that there maybe was too many of us. Um, we can't unfortunately read their mind, although that <laughs> might be fun for a day. It would be um, very fascinating, I'm sure. And what was Snowtra saying? I don't, what do you think? I think she was saying, I can take them, mom. Stand down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's like, you're in my way. I'm charging them. <laughs> <laughs> and so for each one of our moms, you'll probably notice that Galena was actually not very close to us when she started charging. And Jadeite has been right next to the fence and we were kind of messing with her and she didn't really mind. And so each one of them has a different personality that goes along with how they end up acting when they're moms. And so for Galena, she is one that likes to tell us um, and show us that, hey, that's her cap. You're a little too close where the others are not so much. And that's just something we take into account when we're working with these guys is to make sure that Galena always feels safe and that's her calf and her calf is going to learn from her um, what to do out here. She's also been though some one of the most chill moms too, showing off her baby. Yeah. So sometimes she's just got to yeah. say a little hello and sometimes she's not feeling so inspired. Yeah. yeah. Kind of goes both ways. Yeah. yeah. Um, ooh, this is a good question, Teresa. Can you describe the hump that they ah, have? Yeah, so we're gonna hopefully get a good look at this. Of course, now she's gonna stop. Um, little Yord was eating uh, eating Jadeite's ear, and it was super oh, of course. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now they're hiding. <laughs> Yeah, so the hump on their back is pretty cool. So it looks like in a lot of animals, that's a fat or water storage piece. But in a muskox, it's actually uh, just kind of the protrusion of where their tall vertebrae are. So these guys have very tall neck vertebrae. And what that allows them to do is have huge muscle attachments to be able to hold their heads up. And so both males and females have a hump. Our males definitely have a very, a much more pronounced hump than the females do because they've got a much bigger head to hold up. And so, but that's what it is. It's just tall vertebrae to be able to have huge muscle attachments for them. Really amazing to see a skeleton of a muskox because that, um, that spire that comes up off the top just does give tremendous triangulation. And not just holding it up, but I'm able to, to hit another muskox at, you know, the, for the males at 35 miles an hour running each other to, you know, keep their necks strong and stable and to be able to go after prey. So it just their, their power is all in their head and their horns as they they don't kick they don't bite they're just they're all about their head and horns and that's where everything they've got in their defense and offense will will be <laughs> what are you trying to decide yard <laughs> yes this is a little yard we're just going to keep saying it so we can um practice practice saying it we've had a few questions of how to say the different names so we've got yord here so that's spelled j o umlaut um r d and so it's a soft J, and if you can just channel your inner Norwegian when you say it, is what I've been trying to do. So Yord, um, and then we've got the upper, upper Midwest or Upper area. Midwest, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's helped. Presbyterian, I think. <laughs> um, and then we also have Freya, which that one, thank goodness, is very easy to say, um, which I think is another reason why Freya is so well known. Um, and then we've got Snotra, which is spelled S N O T R A. So those are our three, the three names this year. So really, it's just Yord. Yeah. That's Yord. Been... Hi, Pumpkin. Oh, hi. Well, hi. Yeah, but you, you are not anything. You just wanted to be here. She waited until my back was turned. Yeah. <laughs> Were we talking about other muskox? Yeah, so sorry. <laughs> so speaking of Freya, here she is. Here she is. <laughs> see, she's hi, a pretty babe. bold little girl. He's sniffing the little poops. So hard to tell with the, probably the camera, but she's about two and a half feet away right now. Yeah. Come over to say hello. Against mom's wishes. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Oh my goodness. Just look at this idyllic scene though. Mom, baby, barn and mountains. Oh, going for our first day. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't take very long, no. does it? <laughs> Mom did this. Must be right. Right. Yeah. I gotta do it too. 
which maybe that's, I know we talked about that in our last video, but for those of us who didn't see that one, did you guys, um, did one of you want to talk about um, what they're doing when they're trying to eat grass or hay? So as the moms, you can see this green grass is just starting to come into the, the pastures here. We still have off to your right, there's a hay feeder. They always have free choice hay throughout the, the winter time. And right now the grass is just starting to green here in Alaska. We're seeing our soil temperatures come up. And so the moms are just dying for that fresh green. There's a lot more sugar, carbohydrates in this new grass as it comes up. So super yummy for them. The calves see that and they wanna be just like mom. And so they're pretending to eat and they're kind of playing with it and they're getting their first grass. But most, more importantly than getting the grass into their system, they're following their moms around and they're actually nibbling up places where their mom's mouths were, which populates their rumen with the microbes that are essential to make for a really healthy gut. These guys, the way they work is they eat the grass and then they bring the grass back up and they, they will chew on their cut and get it properly sized. It goes into the rumen and it'll ferment on them. And so as it's fermenting, it's it's all these microbes. And so it's really the, the grasses produces the food that gives them the energy. And so they need to get all that room and kicking in and all the microbes going. So it's a really complex chemical plant. There's some microbes that exist in muskox rumen that do not exist anywhere else in the world. So super fascinating process and how they work and how they go. And so this is all, what you're seeing right here is just the greatest mammal learning behavior. They're, they're learning from mom firsthand and they're, they're figuring out what it's like to work it out on this planet. Oh, thanks, Diane. <laughs> Diane Rose is joining us. <laughs> Barn looks awesome, too. <laughs> thanks, Diane. Diane offered a great chance for her and I to sit down for a video. And Diane was here for the very first Mother's Day open house in 1988 and uh, stayed with the farm until uh, 1999. So if I can make it another couple years, I might be able to edge her out for the longest employee <laughs> here at the farm, but Diane gave so much for herself for so long to the farm and was a huge part of the the first, uh, I guess, third of our life right now in getting onto this property. So Diane's a wonderful past friend of the farm and always future friend of the farm and everything she's had to give. So thanks, Diane. Yes, thank you. We happy Mother's Day. Yes, happy Mother's Day. And we encourage you to check out um, the interview that Mark sat down um, with her that he was just talking about, it was just posted probably about 20 minutes before we went live. So it's on our Facebook page or our Instagram. So if you're interested in learning and hearing all about Diane's experience of the early days, um, it's a really great interview. So we encourage you all to check that out. All right, so we'll just give you a few more seconds with these cute little floofs before we officially sign off for the day. Thank you so much everybody for joining us throughout the day or if you're just joining us, um, thank you for that as well. These will all be up on our Facebook page so you can go back and look at them. You can share them, tell your friends and family. Um, so everything will be there. Um, so don't worry if you didn't catch it or if you're just catching it now, still ask us your questions. We'll try to get to them um, within the next couple of days. And yeah, happy, happy, happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. We love you all and we appreciate you. You're all, what's this, what's the saying? The Le Leslie Nope. Oh, you're, you know it so well, Danny. You're beautiful, fabulous, fantastic muskox. Powerful, powerful, powerful muskox. muskox. Yeah. I'd like to thank all of our <laughs> moms it. out there too. This has been, we started out the day very, it's been a tough decision, a heartbreaking moment for us not to open the farm. It's in so many ways what we work towards all year long and getting the farm open for Mother's Day and sharing this property and these amazing animals with everybody and these beautiful babies. So um, although super hard and sad not to have you all here today, we're glad to be able to share this with a broader audience for people who are tuning in. We've had people all over the world check in with us today and we're just so grateful for that. So um, from our hearts and souls, our happy Mother's Day to you. Be safe, be strong, be healthy. And we're gonna pop out on the other side next time we see you guys on Mother's Day. Hopefully you'll all be here enjoying this day with us and our, our beautiful new mommies and everything that this beautiful property has to offer. Thank you guys so much. If you um, would like to see more content, 
please feel free to put in the comments things you'd like to learn about on video. Um, one of the great things, upsides of this is we get to find new ways to bring you guys the muskox farm and all of these cuties. So if there's anything you would like to learn about firsthand, let us know. We would love to be able to show it to you. And we cannot thank you guys enough for sticking with us and showing up for Mother's Day even virtually. We hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks everyone. Happy Mother's Day. Happy